Hey everybody, it's Matthew of Mr. Domestic, where I spread joy and positivity in sewing and fabric play. And in this video, I am going to show you how to make these hanging kitchen towels two different ways. One is sleek and chic. One is ooh la la, va va boom, roughly. Both are super duper awesome, and you will learn both in this video. So before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's have some fun together. Hey everybody, so I'm going to show you how to make this hanging towel. I have them in my kitchen, but you can put them anywhere. You can hang a towel, really. And there are two ways that I'm going to show you. There's a step out tutorial for this one on the Brother Stitching Social that is in the description here that I did that has this template that you'll have to get. For the one I'm gonna show you, I elongated it just to give it more room to show you variety and how you can do things differently. And so this one I'm putting aside. I will show you how I folded this and stuck it in there just to give you the visual. But this one is going to be a second way, which is the flouncy ruffly that a lot of y'all like. Um, that's not my jam, but if it's your jam, then put some peanut butter on it and eat it. I'm all about it, right? So this is the towel. I put this here so that I can add it up really quick. So it's 26 height. Find your own towel, right, really? And then six, and then add two. Six plus two is eight times two is 16. So it's 26 by whatever that number was that I just told you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot. I'm old. Now you need a strip here. I cut this the width based on what I wanted to put on the towel. So you can make this as thin or as thick as you want. And there is more than enough to fussy cut it and center it to where it's gonna be cute as all get out. And then I've cut two interfaced pieces of this from the template right here that I'm going to sew together in this video. The first thing that I'm going to do is to add this. So I'm going to go get my wonder tape and my iron and show you how I'll prep it before I So it. I am going to prep this with wonder tape. It's not affixed and this is not where I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it lower, but you're going to start it with the right side up when you prep it. And then I'm going to put wonder tape to create the quarter inch seam for both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to place this on here and one of them I cut kind of wonky. So I'm going to have to like do some like rectification here. So here, there I go for one. And then the second one and see how I want it to go right there. I, I messed up, <laughs> but I want this to be as even as possible. Okay. But still make it fold. Boom, boom, boom. Shake the room. Okay. There I'm going to now flip it and gently like heat set it. Heat set it, heat set it. Yeah, y'all, you gotta heat set wonder tape. If you don't, that's what's gonna gum up your needles. If you heat set it and then forget it, then you're good to go and you don't have to worry about it. Now I am going to go ahead and flip it over once again, just to press that seam because I want maximum crisposity here, right? So with the paper on, it will give you a crispy seam. And hopefully y'all are figuring out what I'm doing now. And then the second one, I want it to be crispy. Crispy, crispy, crispy. And why I'm doing it this way, there are some Wonder Tape where you can heat set it and, and use the iron right on the Wonder Tape. This is not one of them. So I'm making sure to press it on fabric. And then now I'm going to remove the Wonder Tape. And now that seam allowance is going to be hidden and I can wonderfully affix it onto the towel right here. Set it and forget it. What is that from? I don't remember. Oh, that's like a crock pot or something, right? Or like the George Foreman grill. I don't know. It's something. And there are two things on a towel. There's the back. This is the back where the seam is showing and then there's the front where it's not showing. I like to put these on the front because like that's what you want people to see. So now this is good. Try to line it up as best as the towel shows. And then it's already hot, so I don't gotta set it again. So boom, that looks about centered. It's centered enough for me, right? Okay, so I need to find my scissors. Ah! <laughs> Y'all, 
you <laughs> see me? I almost fell over. And then now I'm going to trim off like to here on both of them. And then if you wanna add more Wonder Tape, go for it. I think that I'm secure in myself. <laughs> Just in what's going on here to where I don't need to add some, but I might regret it. Okay, so see right here? It's right there flush. That was actually really good. <laughs> and now I'm gonna heat set the whole thing again. And this is, I have it on high CD, high heat. That's generally what I keep my iron on unless like I don't want it there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't even know if y'all can see this one. In the camera, yeah, you can see it. <laughs> then I'm gonna heat set this. And now this is good to take over to Alfonso. And I am just going to edge stitch this and I'll show you now. So now I am honestly, I'm just gonna edge stitch it. Estimate an edge stitch, it's not that crucial for me to get out my edge stitch thing, but um, this, honestly, I'm not gonna sew super fast because it's really the only detail that's gonna be super visible and I want it to be cute. So instead of you watching me do this like super duper slow, I'll fast forward it, but I want you to see how I go around in case you've never edge stitched before. So fast forwarding now. Okay, and I'm back chatting. I'm not totally finished, but I wanted to show you because I realized some of y'all might have never top stitched like this before. And you want to make sure that your needle, whenever it's at a stop, the needle goes down. Some quilters like it up, so you'll need to change that setting. And when it gets to the cor corner, you'll just lift the presser foot, and then you'll pivot. I want this to be beginner friendly, so I want y'all to understand that. And then you'll just do the same, go up this. And then I don't wanna end it on a corner, so I'm gonna do it again, and then stitch just a little bit, like one, two, three, and then back stitch. You shouldn't be able to see it, but if you do see it, it'll be hidden and stuff, so don't sweat it. And that, and boom, let's look how pretty that is. Ooh la 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 la. Now I'm going to cut this and then show you how to Those do a ruffle. Those of you who have never done a ruffle this way, I like to use my machine, and so I'll set the length at the maximum length and the tension at the maximum tension and the speed at the maximum speed. And it will gather it with general fabric, it does it a lot more dramatic. With this towel, it will get it to a place where I need it. So I just lower it, and I'm just gonna press, and it automatically gathers it for you, just because of the tension and the length. And then, just in case you need to do any fidgeting, don't cut it and leave some extra here. But see how it just automatically gathered it here? Then I'll just stick that once I sew the other part. If you needed to adjust it, you could take this dangly and then just take one of them like this and then just gradually pull it down and gradually pull it down to adjust it a little bit if you wanted to. And then you could do the same with the other side. But that's a neat trick to give you like perfect evenly dispersed ruffles anytime you need a ruffle, whether it's for this or for a skirt or for like something flouncy on a dress. So oh, yay. Thanks. I'm putting these two together, the right sides together. But before I started sewing, I pressed this and this at a half inch seam allowance before I started sewing. And I don't generally clip, but if this is new for you, go ahead and clip here, here and here, or pin it, whatever you wanna do just because that's where it will start to move. And now I'm going to sew this entire thing at a quarter inch seam allowance at an estimate. And I'll let you see, okay, right here, I'm gonna back stitch right here. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. And around the curve, you just maneuver it. Don't go too fast. And Maneuver it, maneuver it. You're about to hit a straightaway. 
And that's why I put this clip here. If it wouldn't have been here and you're not used to sewing those curves, then it would have looked all jacked up by this point. Same with here, this curve. Without you basing of some sort, then it would start to shift. Okay, now I can continue this curve. I'm doing this in real time just so that y'all can see. And for this, you might need to go over the curve again. And there's a place where I'm going to do it. So yay, it's like I messed up on purpose so I can show you. <laughs> it's only minor, but um, you definitely want the curves to look symmetrical. Okay, I'm to the end. I'm gonna backstitch. One, two, three. Go forward. And let's like investigate. Let's look at it together. So see the stitches are pretty similar, but right there, I just wanna, it's like, why not just go the extra mile? And then take the like the two seconds to uh, like get rid of that like janky part, right? Okay, boom, boom. So just do it slower. No one's gonna know. <laughs> and then ta da. So now what I'm going to do. Where are those scissors? Oh, here they are. Ah, uh, y'all have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so. These are, what are they called? Why do I always forget stuff when there's a camera here? They are, um, they're zigzag scissors. Whatever the name is, can you put it in there? I know I'm gonna remember when I'm done filming. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. These are used a lot in apparel. If you don't have them, then don't sweat it. Let me show you the other thing that you can do. Just around the corners, you want to score it and create little like triangles, but do not cut the stitch because that'll not be cute. And just go around all the curves like that. When it's this way, you want to cut that. When it's here, you don't have to cut the triangle, just cut slips because it's a different kind of curve and it'll spread out. But just because um, I have these scissors that I can't remember the name of what they're called. <laughs> Um, I'm going to cut around and you don't have to watch it um, in real time. I'll fast forward. And then now I'm going to turn it right side out. And that will just allow the edges to be as flat as possible instead of it being lumpy bumpy. Um, push that out. If you have a tool or a pokey thing or like... I got a turner thingy or a pencil or a chopstick just to get this out. And then just even it out. And then just even it out. And then now I'm gonna take this over to my iron and press this flat and then show you how I prep the next step. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you how to sew a buttonhole. I knew that this video was coming up, so I have a separate video that I'll card right here showing you how to do both a buttonhole and a button on your machine, but I wanna show you how to prep it. For here, I am going to like go extra right here. See how, ooh, look at that pattern matching. And this is where I want my button. This is a three quarter inch button that I want to open right here. So if that's where I want the button to land, this is roughly where I want the bottom of the buttonhole. So I'm gonna estimate right here. And why the bottom, because you'll put the button in and then you'll pull it a little bit. And so that's where I want it to land, if that makes sense. And then right here, it's easy breezy. That's where I want to attach the button. Then I have all of the steps in depth in a separate video. So through the magic of YouTube TV video, I am now going to come back and show you how to insert the towel because the button will be done. Now, this needs to get stuck up in here. And as you can see, ooh la la, it's cute. But I'm, just so that this doesn't get in the way, I'm gonna open this up and I put wonder tape already in there. Y'all didn't see it, sorry. And I, want to affix that in there. I use Wonder Tape or glue. Y'all know I love this by now. If it's your first time, they're amazing. So this 
you could do two things. You could just like estimate and then just stick it in there and it'll still be cute. No one will know the difference because whatever. But if you want to fuss with it and make it perfect, I kind of showed before, but as long as you don't pull too hard on this thread with this excess, you can just adjust it and move it, move it down, move it down. And see this side, it's pretty taut, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off so it doesn't move. And I'm using the bobbin thread and the top thread. Don't do it too tight or it will break. And then now I'm gonna fuss with the other side. Just move it down, move it down. Slowly, 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 slowly move it down. And then boom, that looks about good. So now I'm gonna tie this end off so that this one doesn't move. Not too tight, not too tight. Don't wanna break the thread. There we go, and see? Now it's the perfect width to stick in there. So I'm going to use this. And I want the towel, the edge, to line right up to the raw edge of the seam allowance that I folded over. And with this heat set wonder tape, it will stay a little bit. There's enough tack to where it's gonna stay, just a little bit before you heat set it. So that's good. Oh yes, this is gonna be cute. I might not be anti-flounce after this one, y'all. Okay, and then this right here. And I'm going to go take this, heat set it, and you could before or after remove that basting thread or just leave it in because it's hidden. But I will be back and I will show you some stitching. Stuff. Just kind of feel with your fingers just to make sure that it's about even. And before you heat set it, like pull taut right here. You can't see it, but pull taut. And that should straighten them both. But now the first pass that I'm going to do is an edge stitch. So it's less than an eighth of an inch right here. I'm gonna edge stitch it. Once again, I'm not gonna go super fast because I want this to be cute. There's not a lot of visible stitches in this. And it's a super duper quick and easy project, but just giving it that extra love will make the difference. So now I'm going to the end, going to the end, going to the end. And then back stitch. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And then now I'm going to stitch another one, which will be an estimate of the half inch seam and allowance that I put in there. And I'm going to use this stitch line on the edge. Start stitching, back stitch in the beginning, stitch all the way across. And this will one, secure the seam and hide any potential lumpy bumpy of the ruffle and or towel and or seam allowance, so no one will see. And then ta-da, this is it. Boom, oh, there it is. <laughs> so now I'm going to go hang these, you're done. You can gift it, you can keep it, you can love it, you can leave it, all the goodness. Um, but this was a done project. Now you have two ways to make this amazing. So yay, now you can make either or both. Honestly, I didn't know that they would go together like this, but it looks like a couple, like a towel couple got married and now they're hanging on my oven. So <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, got a laugh or a tip or a trick, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep it positive y'all. Mr. Domestic out. <laughs>